What's going on, guys? Marcus Crockett back with another video. So I decided I'm going to do things a little bit different. I want to be, be able to add as much value to the channel, as much value to you guys as possible. So before we get started, uh, this, this will be an interview. This will be actually my first interview. But before we get started, let me tell a quick story. So a couple weeks ago, I'm sitting in my barber's chair, right? And my barber is from Virginia. And we're just talking about sports. And then he goes into the conversation about like all of these people that are from Virginia. So let me give you some of the names that he told me. Uh, Missy Elliott, Dale Curry, Booker T. Washington, Arthur Ashe, Lawrence Taylor, Moses Malone, Cam Chancellor, Allen Iverson, D'Angelo, Chris Brown, Timberland. Like the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And these are all prevalent people within our culture. And then after I left the barbershop, I'm actually thinking like, damn, Virginia's population is only like, 8.6 million people. So just for perspective purposes, Los Angeles County has more people than the state of Virginia altogether, but you have all of these great people coming from this, this little place, right? So I'm thinking like, damn, all these people coming from Virginia, how come I don't know anybody from Virginia that's really doing it like that? And I really got to think, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, let me add one more name to this list. Guys, today I'm bringing you none other than the, the, the grand architect. He put together Clean Biz Network. He was a uh, Jam Pro Franchise Owner of the Year, honorable mention. Guys, without further ado, I bring to you Mr. A.J. Simmons. A.J., how you doing, sir? Oh, man, I'm excellent, especially now after that intro, bro. Like, I don't, that might have been the best intro I ever had. You know what I mean? You, got, you mentioned it, Missy Elliott and Alan Iverson, all of them. Like, I'm on my way, but I ain't quite there, but I appreciate you. You know what I mean? With the warm welcome for show, Marcus. Definitely, brother. Well, you know, I, I got to add you to it, man, because just like them, you are doing big things. You're doing great things. You've been uh, nothing but a, a huge help to the community. You've, 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 you have over, you know, a thousand videos of nothing but just value that you're bringing in. So I definitely got to give you your, your flowers. Thank you. Appreciate that, bro. For real. Yes. Yes, sir. So we're talking about Virginia. All of the people, you know, from Virginia, all of the things that's going on in Virginia. Tell us, like, where exactly in Virginia you're from and, like, how were things for you growing up? Yeah, bro. So I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia. It's probably one of the, if not number one, it's definitely top three worst cities in Virginia, like, as far as crime goes. So definitely not the, the, the best of places that I'm from, but uh, I'm proud of where I'm from. I mean, shout out to Portsmouth, small city. Uh, it's, if you don't know where it is, basically like by Virginia Beach and Norfolk, Virginia, those are like the two popular cities near us. So, um, I mean, more predominantly, predominantly black, mostly single parent homes. The fathers usually weren't in the home when we were coming up. And I mean, so it was a lot of struggle, a lot of projects. And I mean, I'm not from necessarily the projects, but I'm still from the hood, so to speak. So we was in a townhouse. It wasn't an uh, income based apartment complex, but needless to say, though, it Times weren't great, you know what I mean? And my mom, single, single, single uh, parent. So we didn't qualify for like food stamps. So we never had food, right? Because she made just a little bit more than what you can make to qualify for food stamps. So it was like we was had enough money to not be on food stamps, but not enough to actually have food in the house. So it was like the worst place to be in. We had no joy in time, mean, but it, luckily we had a personality. And when I say we were talking about my brother and my sister, we had the personality to still fit in school. The, uh, fit in at school despite not having you know what I mean the cool clothes and all that but um humble beginners but that ain't like that stopped me for sure definitely I'm as you as you're saying that like I'm 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 uh, I'm smiling not at the situation but I could relate to the situation in so many ways like when I went to my first when I went away to college before the scholarships and everything kicked in I was in that position where like my parents made too much money where I didn't qualify for financial aid but not enough money to where I where I was in college living cool. Like it was it was definitely a struggle. So when you say that, I'm definitely able to relate to that, man. Definitely for sure. So yes. so so you mentioned um, you know, going to school and and how personality um helped you be able to navigate your way through school. Like what what kind of what kind of student were you in school? What kind of kid were you? What type of things were you into? Yeah, so I was uh, I was really just there because I had to be there, right? So I never made good grades. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people probably would think that uh, my brother was the the bad student and had the bad grades because he was the one who ended up in prison later on in life. But really, he was kind of he was always kind of more wild than I was too. I was more the reserved one, right? But for some reason, my my grades were just always bad because I was never interested. So 
always been a C student. I did just enough to get by. Sometimes it was F. You know what I mean? And then, but I always did enough to, to make it to the next grade. Uh, I didn't really get in trouble, like, for behavior a lot. You know what I mean? Until I got to high school when I started skipping school. It just never really went. So uh, I almost, I probably, I, if you ask me, I think I went to school less days than I actually missed school in high school. So I don't know how I graduated. I went to night school, still night school. But I came with a sob story to my uh, guidance counselor. And I got her to change my grade in the computer from F to a D. And mm -hmm. she told me, pay my senior dues. And you can go get your cap and gown. So I was able to get my diploma. But definitely not a successful student by far. So uh, for those watching, the kids watching, don't let the great thing stop you. Because, you know what I mean, it, it, it won't affect you in in adult if, if nine times out of ten it won't long you control your destiny definitely I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll i most definitely won't be showing my kids my my high school transcripts into the <laughs> out of high school so so I, I i agree with you on that part man so just two questions in like what i'm hearing from you what what i'm hearing is one you you know you didn't have a, a lot of money growing up and then also you didn't like to be at school, but you knew that it was something that you needed to do so that you can advance further in life. So the the main thing that jumps out to me was uh, basically just being resourceful. Yes, that's it. That is it. Just trying to, you know what I mean? Do what I got to do to get to the next level. That's like even because I spent a little time in the military too, and I didn't like it, but I knew in order for me to get home, which is all I wanted, I just got to do what these people tell me to do so I can get out of here. And so that's kind of how my mentality was in school too. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's one of the things that I wish, like looking back, I would have I would have spent some time uh, in the military, not because I wanted that. Even then, like I didn't want to go there, but I do see uh, some of the benefits that uh, that people get as far as, you know, my mindset uh, you know, and, and discipline that sure. they get from being in the military. And that's, that was really one of the biggest struggles for me in my entrepreneur journey, journey was uh, just just being focused to stand down and have that discipline. So, Absolutely. okay. So with, with, with that, you know, those things out of the way, I'm kind of like building up this, uh, building up this profile, this picture, but you didn't like being at school. What was your, when did you first start your first business and what was your mindset going in? Yeah. So I was 19 years old. Um, and my mindset was really, I'm going to be the richest person, <laughs> you know what I mean? From where I'm from. And by the time I'm 30, I'm gonna be retired, and and I'm I'm you know I thought I was gonna I don't know, but I thought it was gonna be easier than it was. That was my mind frame. Yeah. I thought I was just gonna invest this money into this cleaning business. I'm gonna flip it into this and that, and I'm just gonna be in the newspapers everywhere, and black enterprise in no time. I thought that was my mind frame going in, and I started that at 19. So, so with with all of the people that were around you. Were there any other entrepreneurs that you had that you could look to that were in the same field as you or or trying to get into a similar field? Were there other people that you can like, who did you, who were you modeling your your first business steps after? Yeah, that's funny you asked that. And it's crazy because I got to keep bringing this guy up. Like we were close to something, but it is what it is. It's the guy named Pops. So I used to work for this guy named Pops uh, when I was in last year in high school. And then right after high school, he had a cleaning franchise with uh, Janet King. And so I worked for him. He was an older black guy, had a, a nice little Audi, had a high rise hotel, uh, actually not a hotel, but uh condos downtown on the water. And I was like, man, I want to be like that. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was like, even though him as a, his personality wasn't necessarily what I wanted, but the things that he did, like the fact that he was a black man owning a company, able to hire young black guys like myself and, and drive a nice car. It was like, you know what? That's something that I can do. I knew if he can do it, I could do it. Then I asked him, did you have to go to college for it? And he was like, no. Well, what do you got to do? Just pay for it. And I'm like, all right, back. So I already knew that I was going to do that. And if it wasn't for him having that example, I don't know what I would have done. But I always did know that I I wanted to be my own boss. I knew that from the beginning. So, Okay. So let me ask you, let me ask you this. Do you remember or was there a defining moment? Because based on what you're telling me about, about Portsmouth, uh, Port, Port Smith or Portsmouth? Yes, yeah, so spelled Port's mouth, but it is we say Port Smith. <laughs> okay. Port Smith. All right, yeah. all right. So so telling me, you know, the things that you told me about about Portsmouth, you know, you going on the, the completely opposite side of being a legitimate entrepreneur. Was there any defining moment that was like, I'm gonna go the right way versus going what I've going against you know what I see all the time, what I see everywhere? Like what was yeah. that moment? 
you know what, bro? So really, like, so I don't know about everybody, but I know most people that's from the hood, right? We all kind of grow up idolizing rappers, drug dealers, uh, 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 the gangster movies, right? I want to be like paid in full. But one thing I always noticed was some of these guys could have got out. Like you could have got away with it if they just wouldn't have been so greedy with it. If they would have took that money, put it into a business wash and just left and never looked back. So again, I always just had a different type of mentality. I can't, I got to admit that part where I just was like, you know what, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it smart. So I can't lie. I definitely didn't start off just thinking I'm going to go to clean route. I started off hustling too. And um, but I was watching guys like 50 Cent. Well, I was 50 go from street guy to legit rapper doing $100 million deals with vitamin water. I'm like, you know what? I can do that too. You know what I mean? Because hell, I've been through some stuff. he been through more than me and he's doing it all. So it was like, I know I can do it. You know what I mean? So that that was really my mind state. That was kind of the turning point with just watching the failures of other drug dealers and the failures of the street guys. And then also the success of guys like 50 Cent, Jay-Z, uh, Jeezy. You know what I mean? All of the, the, the drug dealers and the, the gangster types that we looked up to growing up and seeing them switch over, it just let me know that I could do it too. Definitely, definitely. Guys, like, make sure that you're paying really close attention. It's just giving you a lot of of information and it's it's information that we can all use he's using his resources he's looking around to see what works what doesn't work the pros and the cons um you know marketing decisions or the pros and cons versus uh you know which route you want to go when it comes to to forming your business or growing your business just look at the good side and the bad side of things and then and then take calculated risks right you you looked at it you found yourself a mentor and and you decided to go that route yep that's it. Okay. So so that was 19. That was uh that was a couple of years ago, right? So there's a lot that happened, I'm sure, from 19 to where you are now, right? Do you do you feel comfortable just briefly talking about first the downs, right? Yeah. And then I want to slowly work our way to the ups. Okay. It's gonna be I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible. I did so much in that time, right? So at 19. Started my first cleaning company. It was a, a coverall franchise. So started off with coverall, invested with them. Horrible at cleaning, right? Just trying to skip stuff, sweeping stuff under the rug, not mopping at all, uh, missing trash cans. So uh, as I, but I, for some reason I was still growing. I'll tell you the reason why I was still growing in that business was because I had another mentor, Miss Radonna Gray, shout out to her, who took me under her wing and showed me how to, uh, how to buy contracts from other owners. So I would constantly buy contracts from other owners, even though coverall was taking my contracts from me because I kept losing them. I was, I was doing bad service, so they had to take them from me to give them to other franchise owners so they wouldn't lose the customers themselves, right? So uh, as I was going, I started to realize I was starting to lose more than what I'm getting. And they stopped me from buying other accounts out there a while because they realized I was losing too many. So I went ahead and sold the last, I think, three accounts that I had, went all in on a barbershop idea that I had at 20 years old. Uh, that was actually pretty good. The only problem was all of my barbers and stylists were older than me. And at that time, I wasn't mature enough. I, I guess I wasn't mature enough as a business person to lead them correctly, right? So if they come short with the booth rent, then I didn't, I was in with them. All right, well, just give me 40, give me 60, well, give me 70. Sometimes they wouldn't give me anything at all because they come with these little sob stories. So I was too nice in that barbershop. So that barbershop eventually failed because of that. Then fast forward, I went and got a job for a little while. Thought, you know what? Being rich is the same for everybody, right? Being successful ain't for everybody. I started watching these Illuminati conspiracy videos every day, just get high every day, smoke every day, and drink every day. And I'm just like, you know what? No. See, those people, they chose it. You know what I mean? Because I done tried it already. I done had two businesses, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm thinking that it ain't for me. But after a few years go by, I'm working these dead end jobs again. I realized, you know what? I can't do it. I had, I, I, I got this one job that was like a, uh, a, a bakery, flowers bakery in Norfolk. And um, we had me and my wife at the time. She was still my fiance. We had this townhouse. I had uh, my black act. You know, I mean, I talk about it in my, my, my rhymes, but anyway, my black act. And she had her a, a little Chevy, right? And we were a nice little couple. And my daughter was just a newborn baby. And it was like, you know what? I guess this is my life. I'm going to work at this factory. I'm going to work my way up. And I'm going to just have a decent life. Because that's what my mom had, right? The townhouse, two cars. 
hell, I thought she was all right. You know what I mean? We won't struggle and struggle, but we won't rich either. But hell, at least we were good enough. And so I did that for probably about six to nine months. And I started realizing, you know what? This can't be it. So luckily, as I'm starting to realize I ain't going to make it, I'm waking up every morning back aching, just pissed, like at three or four in the morning because I got to get to work on time. And I'm just sitting at the edge of my bed every morning like, fuck, <laughs> I can't believe it's going to be my life for the rest of my life. Every morning I'm sitting there just shaking my head. And I look back at my wife, she in the bed sleeping. I'm like, I ain't got a choice. You know what I mean? We got this baby over here in between us. I ain't got a choice no more. You know what I mean? So luckily I got an opportunity for the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, which is like one of the most popular places to work where I'm from. There's a government job. They hired me as a machinist there and through their apprenticeship program. So that kind of saved me a little bit. I took that job a little more serious. I'm a little more grateful. Uh, I went from making like $9 an hour at that bakery to work to making... I started at 12 something an hour at the uh, shipyard. For me, that was great money at that time, right? So, and I knew that each year, in every six months, you get a raise. So, we're going to go from 12 to 14, from 14 to 16, 16 to 18, 18 to 20 something. So, it was like finally a career, you know what I mean? But even there, once I got there, I was like, AJ, I'm just going to use this, take this money, and I'm going to invest it to another business. I don't know what yet. I actually thought it was going to be a barbershop, a third barbershop, because I ain't love Actually, no. I didn't start my second one yet. So once I got in the shipyard, I did that. So I took the money, invested into this barbershop I did. Again, so barbershop number two. This barbershop didn't work either. I brought a partner in with me. Shout out to my boy, Ike. Uh, but it didn't work for us because the location was stuck in a bad place. We couldn't find barbers or styles that wanted to be in it. The building was kind of run down. So that failed. After that, it was like, all right, it's time for me to do what... <laughs> I didn't want to do. I was going to these business conferences, right? Little workshops in the area. I just go to them because I always knew I'm going to be a business person. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. And I was at this one and um, I was telling them all my different experiences. And I was telling them I want to do, uh, I forgot the two ideas I had, but one of them was to go back and start another cleaning company. And the other one was something else. But I can't remember what it was. And the person told me, they said, well, then you say you had a cleaning company before? I said, yeah. They said, well, did it make you money? I said, yeah. They said, so do that. Versus the other thing that I had never done before. I don't know if it was going to make any money. And I was like, dang. And I was like, all right, best. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the cleaning company. So I went with the cleaning company. That's when I bought the franchise with Jam Pro. Hmm. At this time, I'm going to workshop. This is workshops, right? I'm starting to listen to more positive videos on YouTube versus the Illuminati stuff, right? Starting to change my mind, listening to Brian Tracy. Listening to uh, You Are Creative's channel, Think Positive Thinking. Listening to, uh, you know, all of these different Fortune 500 CEOs. They got interviews on YouTube. Nobody even look at them, right? So I started finding this stuff and listening to the principles and stuff they were teaching. I'm like, you know what? I can do this stuff. So buying to that Jam Pro franchise, as we mentioned earlier, one year later, I'm franchise owner of the year like it's nothing. I wrote a book on cleaning franchises. I started YouTube, right? So I started doing my YouTube to document my journey as a business owner. And uh, it's pretty much went up from there until I kind of burned out, you know what I mean, with the franchise because I was cleaning all of these contracts every day. Didn't have a system out of it because I quit that shipyard job. I was supposed to keep it, make a system out of it, and then quit like nicely, right, with passive income. But I was impatient. I wanted to quit. I saw all these opportunities for cleaning contracts coming up. And I'm like, man, fuck this job. I need to go get these contracts, which was cool. But the problem is now I'm stuck in the field because I got to pay my bills with the business money. So doing that for a few years afterwards, and it's just like, you know, I'm burned out. I can't do it no more. So I was like, I got to get I gotta get out of it. So I go, all right, I'm trying to see, should I give you the long, long version or should I shorten this up a bit? <laughs> so I got an opportunity to work for Janet King through my YouTube channel. She saw the information that I was giving out, Janet King, uh, master franchise on the saw and offered me a sales job. And so I wanted to take it because it was just like, you know what, I'm burnt out. I want to get away from Portsmouth and my house had just got broken in because by that time I was getting known in the city. I was volunteering. I was coaching basketball. I was, you know, new to mayor. You know what I mean? Personally. I was becoming that guy. My wife ride around in the Range Rover. I'm riding out in my big big body Cadillac, and everybody know my business owner. So I think I'm doing something. But uh, anyway, my house got broken in. I got tired of working all the time, and it was just like, you know what? This ain't it. I gotta get out of the city. 
So after the lady offered me the job in Vegas, I wanted to take it. Jam Pro was like, no, don't take that job. We'll give you a job, right? We didn't know you would take a job. So I was like, all right, well, I'll take a job, but it can't be in here. So they got me down to Jacksonville, Florida, which I still reside today. And uh, went and worked for Jam Pro there. And so I was working at Jam Pro in Jacksonville, Florida, still running my cleaning company in Virginia. And at some point after working for Jam Pro, I realized that, you know what? I could do better than that. Like, I don't I didn't like the model that Jam Pro had. And when I suggested to them how they could tweak it, they didn't really listen to me. So I said, you know what? I'll do it myself. <laughs> so that's when I quit the job, sold the franchise, started again from ground zero, had nothing really. Because when I sold it, I sold it to my brother. He ain't had no money. So I had to sell a finance it to him, right? So I went on a big loss of money when I sold it. And I started Clean Biz Network. All right. So Clean Biz Network started in 2018. And uh, we started with starter kits. Then we started selling leads. The leads really helped us take off. Started doing courses, started doing um, the bidding calculator, I mean, mobile app. And uh, it just been up from there, to be honest with you, bro. It was a gamble. I started over. I was, I think I was 28 at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, I didn't know if the shit was going to work or not. And I had all of these people still following me, by the way, on YouTube. And it's like, I'm helping people get revenues every month from their cleaning company that was past what I was doing while I'm starting over, but it was like, you know what? I just know I'm doing, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I know I'm doing something right. Right. So uh, I just kept believing in myself, put, keep pushing. And I was able to build that business. And by the way, somebody might wonder, well, AJ, why didn't you, when you quit the, the jam pro, why didn't you just start a cleaning company yourself? You already knew what to do. Just start one independent without them. I couldn't because I had a non-compete agreement in place that lasted, I think it was for two years after I quit the job. So it was like, damn, I can't start a cleaning company. What can I do? So that's when I was like, you know what? People are already asking me for advice anyway. People need. So I just started figuring out ways to help people with their independent cleaning companies, which was through unique customers, start a lead generation service. Oh, you, you don't know what supplies you need? Uh, a cleaning business starter kit, right? So all of the different things, and I put them all together, and that's how I was able to create Clean Business Network where we are today. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Long with the story, but we finally got <laughs> no it, that that right there. That's that's perfect, man. Because you put a lot of things in there that I, I hope people are really listening to that'll be able to take away from. Uh, one of the things that really stood out was, you know, people will do things and they'll say, "Okay, it didn't work. This just ain't for me. I'm done with it." They'll look at a setback or an obstacle as a failure. Whereas you looked at that as like, no, it's not a it's not an L. Well, it's an L in the sense of that it's a lesson. My question now is. Out of the things that didn't work, the the original um, situation with Coverall, um, the the other, the, you know, the franchise with with, uh, with Jam Pro, all of the things that didn't work, are you able to take those lessons that you learned then and still and apply them to what it is that you're doing now? Without a doubt, that's so. I got so I, I actually am working on a book right now too, and I just got finished talking about how the reason why I was able to get clean business not work so fast. Because I remember when I sold my, my cleaning company to my brother, um, he couldn't believe it. I had caught back up with him in revenue within the time that I did, right? But the main reason was because the number one skill that I learned, if I didn't learn anything else from my last cleaning company, was don't do the work. Like, do not do the physical work in your business if you want to scale. And so I was burnt out because I was cleaning all these damn buildings. Yes, I'm making six figures every month. But it's like, look, I, I'm killing myself. And I can't even like I can't even do the books correctly because I don't have time. I'm too tired from cleaning buildings. I can't even do sales material and create a website and do all these other things that the business needs because I'm just too busy in the business instead of working on the business, right? And so the number one thing I took with that was that. And so immediately when I started my cleaning uh, clean business network, I said I'm going to start this telemarketing service, uh, which is my lead generation service, but I'm not going to call. I'm hiring from day one. And so I immediately did that. I did the math and figured, all right, I can charge this much and pay out this much to a worker. This will be left over for profit. And immediately turned that, carried that principle over from what I learned from my cleaning business. So that's one example of definitely, I learned something from all of those experiences. And even with like for the barbershop, when I was too scared to tell my elders what to do, I didn't that. By, you know, by the time I started my next cleaning company, even in that point, I didn't care who you were. I, I fly my 
mother-in-law before. I fought my childhood best friend before. I fought my brother before. I don't give a fuck who it is no more. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't want to. I'm still a nice guy, but hey, I'm going to do what I have to do to protect that business. So uh, definitely every loss was a lesson for sure. That's right. Definitely, man. Yeah, feel, they say feelings only hurt. They don't apply to business, though. Um, That's right. <laughs> so so let me let me ask you this. So, you know, a lot of the time, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're the face of the company. We're we're the ones who the who who the customer sees. We're the one who the who the staff see. Um, if you don't mind, like, could you really could you share the significance that that your that your spouse that your wife played? Because they're they're behind the scenes a lot of the time. They don't people don't see or don't hear some of the the inspiration or the encouragement that comes from uh, that comes from that side of things. If you don't mind sharing, like, what was the the major role in your success? that that your that your wife played yeah you know what shout out to my wife regina because you know i i I wasn't giving her enough credit over the years even though i shot her out almost in every video but i i wasn't looking at it the right way right because i used to kind of take her for granted because it was like it's my vision it's my hustle my drive and i would kind of negate the fact that she was there and it's like and i started to really look at it and realize you know what well for one I had to beg her to quit her job to help me because she wouldn't do it for a while anyway. Because, you know, she didn't trust that. It wasn't her vision. Like, what is this new business idea you're trying to do? You know what I mean? But I kept begging her, please quit your job, quit your job. Help me build this. Now maybe we can do it faster if you help me. And so eventually she did. So I can't thank her enough for that. And then also, like, when she was in the business, like, really, like, she wasn't just, like, a, a pretty face or just somebody there. Like, she actually, it would be times when you get, you know, sometimes you get sick. And if you in the field like how I was, you can't afford to get sick. This has got to go on. So it'll be times she go out there by herself and get it all done. And I don't know how the hell she would do it with the amount of workload we had, but she would do it. And 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 do it like it's nothing too. So it's like it will be times I came across like a money opportunity up in Pennsylvania. I go out there, get some work, and I Jenny, can you hold the business down while I go for these two months? And she'll hold it down. But you know I mean run the employees, clean a couple of buildings if she got to. But she did what she had to do, you know what I mean. And so I just can't think and 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 her, I can't thank her enough and 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 praise her enough for the role that she plays. Uh, still making sure I'm fed every day, still making sure the kids good every day, still making sure the house clean every day, right? All of the little things that I wouldn't probably have time for, right? So uh, shout out to my wife for sure. And, and I mean, I I'm not cleaning a building. I, it, like to this day, if I had to clean a building, she got to be with me. Period. Like. Because she's going to make it go twice as fast. You know what I mean? Like, that's my ride for real. There you go. There you go. Guys, listen. AJ's dropping jewels. Hit the like button. If you have a, a spouse or a, uh, you know, it, it's in, it's invaluable to have somebody to be there with you to that's going to ride with you, that's going to help you do the things that you need to do. Um, I know for sure that uh, that I that I do. I have somebody there that's, that's going to ride with me. And, you know, it, it's a priceless situation. And yeah, bro, one thing I just wanted to add too on that, that, that supportive spouse thing is this, especially for my men out there, my guys, man, that's one less thing you got to worry about, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you got to get, you got to get, you got to get it from somewhere, right? And it's like, if you can have that one stable lawyer, one that you can always go to and get it, you can focus on the business more if you ain't got to be out here chasing these girls, you know what I mean? So, yeah. or chasing guys, depending on what, you, what you're into. But, uh, most definitely, I definitely want to point that out as well. Ain't nothing like that, <laughs> yeah. And and then, too, you know, it's it's always good, uh, to be able to have someone there who's been there with you, uh, from the beginning, helping you form your, your, your plans, helping you form. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it's something special when you, when you have that, man. Um, uh, to be able to know that the person next to you is there and they, and they riding with you, they helping you, they, they, they see your vision and they, and how, uh, you know, unselfish is that of someone else to put their, put their dreams and their aspirations to the side to help you reach yours. Like that's an, it's an amazing thing. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you got it, definitely appreciate it, hold on to it. And, and if you don't got it, you know what I mean? Be looking, be looking for it because you know there, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fools gold out there. But you know what I mean? You got to make sure that you you get your hands on something real, something solid that's gonna hold you down. Yeah, for sure. Somebody that wants you for you and not because you got X amount of subscribers or followers or how much money you're making, right? For sure. Definitely, definitely. 
And AJ, man, I definitely appreciate your time, man. I do want to ask just two more questions, two random questions, nothing to do with business, but I, I just want to get your perspective on this real quick. So earlier we were talking about, um, I remember you were saying before you really dove into uh, into the business things, you were looking at like a lot of conspiracy stuff, Illuminati, this and that and the third, right? So let me ask you this. In an alternate reality, right? Completely mm -hmm. different. You're the exact same, look the same, but, the, but you cannot do business what would that aj in that reality be doing wow um man <laughs> all right I, I think i would be doing i would be some type of scholar like some type of historian uh investigative scholar right like because i remember i, was, I told my daughter this like i really wanted to uh, get rich anyway mm -hmm. so i could finally be free to go figure this shit out. I want to know why are we here, right? I want to know who, like, I want to know everything. I want to know, I don't want to go too far because I, I could mess up some people's belief system just by saying one little thing I was about to say. But I want to know everything, right? I want to know everything. The purpose of it, why we're here, where it came from. I want to know it all. And I want to know it scientifically to the fact, to the T. I want to study that. So if, if I wasn't in business, I could do it all over again. That's all in an alternate reality, rather. It would be some type of, I mean, science scholar. <laughs> so, in, in other words, you still looking to solve problems. You still yep. looking, still looking for solutions. There you yep. go. Okay. Now, the 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 last question I have, since we we talking about alternate realities and different things like that, I want to know right now: Does AJ Simmons believe in UFOs? <laughs> um. Yes, the, because. It, based on the definition, right? Unidentified. It's plenty of those. So yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was talking about the the the, the the little gray men and all of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know if I believe it like that though. Like the nope. way they, they they yeah, I don't think I believe it like that. <laughs> well, I'm on the record, brother. I, I definitely believe it, man. It's, dude, dude, it's too big, man. It's way too much stuff going on that we don't right. even know. So so yeah, but I definitely want to pick your brain on that. But AJ, man. I definitely, uh, you know, I mean, once again, I, I I thank you. I appreciate you. You've been nothing but, uh, but value not only to myself, but you know, to 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 thousands of uh, other people, man. So, on on behalf of, of myself and everyone else, you know, what I mean, I, we definitely see you, salute you, appreciate you, and thank you. But guys, uh, like I always say, guys, in business, spectators are only going to watch, but hustlers actually the ones that get involved so that they can win. Guys, I'm always dropping jewels, but the only way for you to be in position to pick them up is you got to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that said, I'm going to let AJ Simmons close it out. Yes, appreciate you, Marcus. And y'all make sure y'all subscribe right here to Marcus' channel, man. He's one of the goats in this industry for real. He coming, and he, you know I mean? he coming hard. So definitely subscribe to Marcus Crockett over here. And you can also subscribe to my channel, AJ Simmons, on YouTube. And uh, that's what I got, man. Hopefully y'all got some value over here. I know you did. I mean, so let's get it. Entertainment.